happy to be back in Toronto. No, not really happy to be back in Toronto, but back in town for the relaunch of this week's uh, BNN Bloomberg Berman's Call. It's uh, relaunched at its new time, 4.30 on Mondays with Jacqueline Hansen as my co-host. So really excited to get that going and figure out what's happening in the world. So let's get into it right away. Let's have a look at what's on my radar and dive into the chart room. Often we like to uh, consider what economic data we got this week and what we learned and inflation, inflation, inflation is really the story. There were some uh, concerns that developed a few days ago with some economic uh, forecast and sure enough, the PCE core deflator actually did jump uh, significantly in the month. You can see here expectations were for 4.3. It came in at 4.7. And previous month that was at 4.4 was revised up to 4.6. So it's this core deflator that the market is, is really challenged with and the Fed is really challenged with. And as we've been saying for the past year, it's going to be very easy to get from eight or nine down to four, five, or six, but it's going to be very difficult to get back down to two. And so for most of the month of uh, February, the higher for longer message has been relayed from Fed governor to Fed president, speech after speech after speech, pretty much unanimously. Um, when we look at the survey and the actual for the core PCE, you know, we could see that it's certainly come off the peak of its levels a year ago, February, but generally hasn't come down very much. And it's the idea of this sticky inflation that is really the uh, really the core part of of some of the issues here. So let's have a look at what sticky inflation really means. So when we when we dig down into the meat of the uh, inflation numbers, you know, inflation or, or prices that change frequently, i.e. In, in a month or two, you know, rapidly, the most frequent change is motor fuel. Obviously, you, you know, drive down the street, you can see how much you're paying for a liter or a gallon of gas. And, and it changes pretty much by, by the day. So what this table does is it breaks this down from stuff that changes more frequently, say every couple of months, to stuff that takes longer, half a year, year plus. And, and so when you look at the items of inflation that are more transitory versus the ones that are stickier, which includes owner equivalent rents, big chunk of, of CPI in there, but things like education. So tuition costs go up once a year. So you can see here that uh, level of importance, medical care, you know, dentist doesn't keep changing prices on you when you, when you go, you know, for, for dental work, um, you know, on a regular basis. And, and so, you know, driver's license fees, personal care services, you know, the massage is a hundred dollars and it's been a hundred dollars. And then nothing gets done for three or four or five years. And then all of a sudden it's 125. So you get bigger, more significant, but less frequent price moves. So they've broken the table down into sticky versus non-sticky. And what we're seeing in the sticky inflation is that it's not coming down as much as some of the more transitory numbers, the more commodity-based numbers that, that are tied to food prices and things that adjust, you know, really on a on a day to day basis. So a big part, not including the rents of these more stickier things, these tend tend to have a higher component of wages in them versus the ones that are more commodity based, where the input costs change on a more frequent basis. So kind of interesting view here. And we think that inflation is going to be stickier. That means higher for longer. That means more of our market volatility. That means don't chase rallies and be a little bit cautious when it comes to that narrative of the Fed pause and the Fed pivot. Back in our chart room here, we're looking at the quality of the rally 
in January relative to the correction in February. And Goldman Sachs puts together a list of, of liquid shorted stocks by their hedge fund clients. No, no names are attached to it from the individual client, but an aggregate of what's most shorted. And the rally in January was clearly led by short covering and this basket of short covering names that was up in January or, or to the market peak on February 2nd by over 35%, where the broad equity market, when we look at the US total stock market ETF, that was up around 10%, a bulk of that was technology, the broader markets, so interest rates. So as, as yields fell, this green line, this yellow line here is the 20 year treasury bond. So when the price of that goes up, yield to go down, but that message from the Fed of higher for longer and stickier inflation, and we may have to do more, pushed interest rates up, bond prices down, correction to equities, but the high valued, overvalued, speculative names have corrected far more. So that's the environment we're in, folks. Don't shoot the messenger, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. So how does that translate into the broader markets here? Your S&P 500, biggest index in the world, represents almost 40% of the market capitalization of the entire world. Clear downtrend over the past year was broken late January and into February. And now we've come out of this channel. So bull, new bull channel. We couldn't get to the top end of that channel, which shows relative weakness. Again, the quality of the rally. Listen, Apple rallied, Microsoft rallied. They all rallied. But relative to the short squeeze that we saw, the quality of the rally wasn't there. And now, lower high, lower low, we're starting to break. As of Friday's close, got right down to the 200-day average. Not surprisingly, an area to cover shorts. Buyers stepped in. We got a little bit of a bounce. Listen, folks, I don't think it's going to hold, but this is an interesting place for the market to be between the break of the 50-day average on Friday and the support that showed at the 200-day average. If we get back below this falling channel, look out below a retest of the 3600 area seems like a high probability in the months to come. So for our bull and bear picks of the week, again, the bearish side of it is caution. Don't chase rallies. Look for places to protect, get defensive, covered calls, whatever it is that you do to make your portfolio a bit more defensive. On the bullish side of things, we commented last week that we like natural gas. We're seeing big reversals in the natural gas complex, deep oversold readings this week, and we really like natural gas valuation here. You want to be in the oil and gas names, be more in the gassier names, more in the pipelines at this point than in the you know big diversified or, or drilling type names. Um, in the energy complex. Another bull pick, we got very overbought short term in gold in January. We were writing calls in our portfolio. We sold off our, our long call positions that we has, had established and we talked about in September and October. I like the pullback here. I think a base is forming. It's tied into right now higher for longer, but this pullback in precious metals should be something that's very, very interesting for longer term gold bulls out there. I've recently wrote some puts for March to actually buy the GDX at 27, closed at 26.99. And finally, interest rates. This is the 30 year or 20 year plus uh, long bond ETF. And while we hated it up here, it's getting back to value. Now, the question is, can we get back to the extreme high yields in October? And the answer to me is I don't think so. Uh, I think the recession risks 
are going to play out in the higher for longer scenario. The harder landing makes more sense. And while we do have tremendous supply issues in treasuries over the next year or two coming that will limit a significant rally at this point, when the economic data starts to decay in the back half of this year and maybe even over the next couple of months, we're going to see long bonds rally again. Wouldn't be surprised if we could see TLT get back to 120 in the scope of the next 6 to 12 months. So what can go up 20% in the next year? It isn't equities at this point. But bonds and long bond duration looks very interesting. Have a great week, everyone.